Died like a duckling full of tarantulas And now that I'm here tonight It's gonna get weird Not enough features Cats should breathe fire Bears should sing choir Very nice Look at this tower Under my power Look at these people Puny and feeble Ooh. Look, I'm just a triangle Trying to save you From the delusion Society gave you Gravity's a lie so is the sky Trust in the all-seeing, all-knowing eye well, Look at this money, who's that honey? Look throughout history, how could you miss me? Seriously, I'm all over the place Look at this weather, I can do better Man, the rainbow rainbows, screaming tornadoes Hello everyone, my name is Notepad and, I'm, and I write games for fun. So, what are we doing today? Well, we're going to do our, well, as usual, our single read-through of our game, otherwise known as Project Tactics, and kind of wrap things off as appropriate. Because what's done, really? I did a quick look through of everything yesterday, and after adding a few pictures and making things pretty, I realized that there's not much else I can add here without having kind of more focused input on things. So, in the meantime, I'm just going to do a, a once-over and just clean up anything I see that looks a little bit odd. So I'm going to crack a cold one with the boys, the ones known as myself, because I am so fucking alone, oh god. But, uh, it's going to be a nice, relaxed stream. After this, I am going to probably go over what's the, the plan going forward it's going to be. So, let's start going through... <laughs> Only temple statue you split modifiers since you reach target number for simple for simple check. It'll probably boost you up a little bit. Shrink you down again. Put you right there. I mean, right. Come on. Come on. Why did you look that way? There we go. <laughs> Just make it a little bit nicer. Uh, the results from the post check. Character, character is captain. News. Attributes. It's absolutely terrible. Captain has 10 attributes to find one. Skill guy and others in the heat of battle. Uh, let's see, you're taking two additional. Uh, yep. Yeah. Skill plus. Skilled fighter specializing in offensive maneuvers and tactics on the battlefield. Ships is forefront of the battle. Actually, I don't even really need these anymore, do I? 
So I just can remove those. Those are a little bit redundant. Will's a peon unit, which is zero net, which contributes nothing. It's nothing. Uh, okay, so plus one dex, plus one attack, if I believe. If I recall correctly. Yes, plus one attack. Article light, plus one attunement. Yep. And that actually brings me to the Magus. That's attunement as well, if I recall correctly. Yes. Plus one attunement. Plus one strength. And plus one toughness. I just snap my back into place again. Count is not fully equal to 10, 10 plus, 5 times the toughness. Hmm. Sounds of combat. Oh, and Lindy Temple stacks to turn your starting initiative value. Uh, Scorpion and duels, captains fighting. Attacking the opponent of the element. We get the double damage. On the other hand, attacking a, a target which is strong against an element, they're half damage, and only human does not start with element, but certain races may. The element tied to their person, or armor, or elemental effects always take priority. Okay. War bands. I didn't really go too deeply into deployments. I probably could. Go away, Kyle. Uh, this one becomes engaged. Why are you all that way? You're not supposed to be that way. This is why we do a walkthrough, just to make sure everything looks right. Here's another squad and rolls in the post. Strength first. Uh, OC strength check. Plus strength, plus weapons, minus loser's toughness to the opponent. The other one, the 10 plus weapon. That's Victor's toughness and damage and retaliation. Uh, I range attacks on an opposing squad. They make an opposed dex versus toughness check. On success, the squad deals 1d10 plus enemies plus dex minus enemy toughness. On a fail, the squad deals 1d10 plus weapons minus enemy toughness value. Plus to defend against any attack against them. The squad takes a breather and reassesses their issues. All members of the squad are sort of 2 plus 2 health. I should do a plus there. Plus 2 health. And they reroll initiative with the extra d10. They are considered exposed. Retreat. The squad makes a dedicated effort to flee the battle and regroup elsewhere. All members take 1d6 health damage. 
1d6 damage and for 1d10 plus 1 units away chosen by the captain, they immediately break any engagement. You're a little loud. I'm going to turn you down just a smidge on my side. Quiet, quiet. There we go. Nice and quiet. So, um, fight each other personally, ignoring attributes of. Yeah. Actually, I'm going to rewrite dual. Uh, dual. Oh, give me a second. Format, font. Oh, we'll make it 24. To the captain, captain of the squad issues a challenge to the opposing captain. They accept. They will begin to fight one another for the round as if they were in a skirmish, skirmish situation. Any damn situation. They ignore the attributes of the squad during this time. If if a captain refuses the duel, she's the challenge. Deny it. Refuses the refuses the challenge. They must. They must make a morale check to keep the unit, keep the troops, keep the squad in order. With that entire thing, the duel is effectively a way for people like the warlord and knave to really shine because their entire gimmick is having a lot of things to do in micro combat so it's them leaping out forward and being like aha i'm going to shank you now or haha i'm going to stab you in the face with an axe you know it's the you know that's their specialty is getting into duels fighting the enemy captain and really reducing their health by a significant amount because again if the captain dies Goes down to their squad retreats. They're route. They route immediately. I make that kid up and fall back. Uh, actually, I should add in a section up here. If a squad chooses to retreat during the time of a morale break well if the squad actually if the squad is forced to re hello phone retreat during a morale check they are considered routed and do not reform That's kind of how you route. Like, it's, okay, we're forcing them to, you know, flee, like, even if it's like, hey, their captain's down. They're technically retreating, then. You down the captain, they're all at half health. They can't actually succeed at their morale check. They all fuck off and leave, and you won. So all you really have to do at the end of the day is get them to half health and kill the captain. Once that's done, you're good. You're solid. But you may want to kill troopers. Because, again, if you kill, like, a, for example, a big trooper who's worth half their health, they're going to be forced to take a morale pen check. And if they can't actually succeed at it, they're going to be helpless for rounds upon rounds, and they're just going to break that way. Phone, what do you want? Okay, remind me later. Jesus, phone, why? Uh, let me see. Expose. Do not care. They do not reduce the damage by their toughness.
so yeah each of these are considered about an acre so everyone's kind of moving their squads to kind of engage with each other but everyone can kind of pile in a single one which like take this take this map for example if everyone were to pile along this road here it's just going to become a bloodbath for both sides so you want to move around you want to kind of like try to tactically you know get around them and there's always an objective outside of just killing the enemy or routing them. You maybe want to take something back here. It's like, we don't really want to risk our troops' lives. So why do that? Pepper them from a distance. Ambush them. Hit them that way. The less you actually can risk your troops' lives, the better. Because <laughs> they are expensive. And... Actually, let's just real quick look at the mm, speed for all that squad fights through rounded down uh, breaks through the enemy formation and merges one d six behind the enemy and invigorate again plus four to the toughness for the round the squad must be in outnumbered condition. Side strike. Actually, let's not. Valorous strike. Uh, the uh, squad moves in order nice and deadly. Actually, let's call this pummel. Pummel strike. Uh, he will smack an opponent with his pummel. With his weapon to stun them momentarily. Uh, this is organized in deadly fashion, making a single squad, doubling the damage they do for a single melee assault. Armored up, meticulous and for qualities, and able all the streets to gain plus one damage resistance to their armor. Which is kind of nuts when you kind of get with the super heavy armors where they can oh, soak up like six damage before they actually take anything. Which, so let's say your squad takes like 15 damage in it, you can just soak it all and say, We take no damage because we have three guys with six arm with six damage resistance and we're going to spread it around them and no one's taking any damage. And so it's like, Ha 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 ha, look at me, I'm better than you because I'm stronger than you. That's kind of the nice thing, is that they're able to get stuck in combat very easily, and able to survive that combat. While other other uh, unit, other uh, captains, such as the Warlord Knight, uh, Warlord Knave, and Ranger, they're not really designed to get stuck into combat, as the Knight is. That's their thing. You know, they're not fast, they're not tough, they're not strong in the way they're going to do a lot of damage, they're just giant rolling tanks coming at you and that you can shoot with your anti-armor everything and it ain't gonna do jack diddly shit. So, we will do a number of focus more order. Let's see, the Volod. Uh, damaging. So these are all micro ones. These are all more... I mean, terrain does not suffer... See, this is why I say, like, Night Warlords are actually pretty decent, because you can do a lot of... Your idea is to get stuck into combat, really, and start triggering things like uh, Overwhelming Presence, as well as Outnumbered but not Outmatched. And it's, yeah, we're not taking any penalties to being outnumbered, and, but we're getting this huge bonus where we're taking absolutely no damage from it. Uh, let's see, more cry plus two hit for the round. Can attack two nearby targets every turn. As far as it's true, one d four health during a duel. D six units in any direction, then mix and move, killing strikes, die. Yeah, this is the warlord's. You can argue kind of his ultimate gimmick, the right of heroics, and living to fight another day, where he can just. Back up instantaneously. You can just disengage from a fight without taking any your damage. Alternatively, you can go for just the killing strike method and just say, 
okay, there is a big boy who's smacking our troops around. I'm going to leap on him with my sword and stab him in the throat. Because I am a crazy Viking man, and you aren't, because I'm cool. That's literally the Warlord's gimmick, you could say. This is more, I, you know, I'm more going down the offensive route. This is I'm going to, down a more defensive route, like a Magus Warlord. Living to fight another day, just running away. <laughs> just like, yeah, yeet, see you later, losers. Uh, he's valuable. Very valuable. Lay in my beautiful desk and squeakity squeak, squeak, squeak. Uh, let's see. Oh, man. Devastating storm. Uh, spells by calling upon a specific element to coat the number, coat a number of units. Coat a caster number of units in a D8 plus ATU. In a 1D8, I should say. 1. 1d8 plus ATU mice put a spell to all squads in the area. Because that's the Magus' big thing, is just coating the area in fire. <laughs> yes, the Magus, you, you can build your Magus to be a Magic Napon Man, and just uh, pretty much play Fortunate Sun in the background as you carpet bomb people you don't like, which is a completely valid tactic, which you should totally abuse. Uh, let's see. Uh, can I be, cannot be hit by range attacks. Plus four toughness for the round. Uh, kill everything in a 15 mile radius because fuck you. Uh, actually, you know, I'm going to change this from Blast because we have Blast Magicians. And we're going to change this to uh, Spear of Destruction. Bill of Energy of Destruction. Energy in a straight line. Charge three warrior magicians, not considered exposed during the casting of magic. Arguably, I don't need this, but I'm going to keep it in there just in case a magus says, Oh, I will. I want these big burst casters. I also want to be have knave troops, I want to have ranger troops, I want to have knights troops, and I don't want to get a warrior, a warrior mage. I think they get this as well, but again, I don't want that. Corrupt Ground, Radiance, Protect, and number of casters and spawn plus six toughness for the round, recharge four. Incineration. Yeah, incineration is the I'm going to win this duel whether you like it or not. But the the biggest issue with incineration versus that, like, fighting a Magus overall is they have very weak troops just in melee comedy. Hell, even their tier 3, tier 4 units may at max have, like, 11 health. So if a... And they themselves aren't really focused on toughness, and they shouldn't be, really, or strength or any of that, unless that's kind of what they're going for. So you have to kind of make a compromise. That's the... I'm going to spam my ATU up, you know, my attunement up real high, so I, you know... Anytime I get into a duel, I use incineration. I win the duel. Uh, on the other hand, <laughs> it's the, oh, I'm going to use incineration. Uh, or like, oh, okay, I'm in a duel. They attack first. And, oh, I have zero health now because they do a shit ton of damage and I'm wearing robes. <laughs> it's like, well, fuck. <laughs> so that's kind of your, uh, you know, I think I should actually turn that down to only times too. Because you can get... At max, that'll be 20 default. Like 20, 20 plus 1d12 damage. That'll kill most enemies. Hell, that'll kill most characters. And build an Eora, designate number of caster squad, uh, number of casters squads to gain plus 6 strength for the round, recharge 4. 2 less to recharge. Yeah. Actually, I put it to recharge. Uh, recharge 3. Recharge 2. No, 3. And the bishop, corpus of mente, body and mind, destroys initial plus two health and time to use that, two plus two damage, number of casters plus three health,
yeah, no, the, the bishop's gimmick, you could say, is making his squad real strong, real fast. Because, and making sure that every time you down a member of his squad, he is taking you with them. <laughs> you know, it's... You pretty much you know, call forth the Avengers, and each, each character is their own valuable, you know, part of his puzzle. A more warrior bishop, you can go down the route of having a lot of abilities that just absolutely buff your guys to insanity. So you're just charging forth at the nearest enemy and just ripping them to shreds with uber, you know, uber troopas. On the other hand, if you want to go down the more casting, supporty route, you can go down the you know, faith through service and get things like in nomine deus, uh, sanctus verbum, and you know, divina, Salva divina salvator, uh, which effectively say, uh, I'd take no damage, or hey, uh, I they deal plus two damage from any source. You know, my team. Uh, you're hanging back the entire time, but you're just granting other people's strength. You're saying, okay, you're going to live a little bit faster. You're going to get heal. You know, you're going to get assisted. You're going to get assisted. You're going to get that bonus. Or, again, faith, faith through sacrifice, you can argue you just want a load of shitties. Or you can just spam martyr, <laughs> martyrdom on them being just like, oh no, you killed my peon. He killed your awesome warden, which is tier four to my tier zero shit troop. Oh no. <laughs> Yeah, are you effectively suiciding poor people, you know, home, the homeless, into the enemy? Yeah, you are. But don't worry, we're we're all good people here, right? Right. Uh, this squad is a tight group of individuals. The knave really needs to have someone paired with him to really bring him out. Like, a knight knave is pretty strong because you can get into those kind of bigger fights and come out ahead. Because you're doing the damage not necessarily directly with your troops, which you're kind of doing it a little bit indirectly. Or you can pair it with... Uh, knave bishop can actually be kind of scary because you're buffing your troops up to insane degrees with both of them. So they're just really powerful troops. They're not great actual units alone, but... You know, through the power of friendship, you, <laughs> friendship and prayer, we managed to kill the enemy. Yay! Yeah, this is uh, twisting the knife is a big one in duels. Actually, I should. Screw it. Duels. Skirmish and duels. Yeah, and then there's the ultimate technique, which is quite literally you just kick them in the balls and hope for the best. Oh no, the orc captain's coming to murder us all. What do we do? Kick him in the balls and run away. Oh, well, fuck. <laughs> we immediately render a half their squad useless for like two seconds as we just bolt out of there. I mean, if it works. Micro, 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 micro. I feel like I'm commentating StarCraft right now. Gotta get that micro, macro up. Ranger can go get really strong really fast, just depending on whether or not he chooses to do that. Because he may he may go down the route of man, I really feel like just spamming my my bow in combat and just ripping people to shreds because I'm a monster with the bow. Alternatively, he could just not do that and not worry about that and just do things like ambushes, taking cover and. You know, saying, screw it, we're scrambling, and just leaving the situation behind. Uh, let me take a little maneuvers and tactics. 
Okay, so light armor, basic hand weapon, white shield, basic hand, basic hand, medium armor, martial hand weapon, medium shields, medium armor, medium great spears. Heavy armor, heavy martial hand, super heavy armor, martial weapons. Ooh, we should put great weapons there. I like to put great weapons. Heavy shields, great weapons. Sorry this isn't the most engaging of content right now, but don't worry. The reason this is the way it is, because we need to make sure everything works. Because working, when things work, that means things aren't breaking. Corazores. Well, I'm mispronouncing that horribly because I'm not Greek. Hand weapon, martial ranged weapon, great martial weapons. Harassments, uh, yeah, flat. yeah, that works. Revolutionary. Carriers. Arcanist, Blast, Magician, Blah. Good old fashioned explosions. I'm gonna bump you up to 17, mate to you. Make you a little bit tougher to pull off. You do a lot of damage, actually. Yeah, and the, the Explosion Wizard's ultimate thing is that they can just nuke a location. Just absolutely cast magic nuke on a single uh, unit. Which is very good. The problem is that everything affects all squads in every unit. So it's just like, I'm going to cast nuke in the middle of the fight. I mean, it's like, okay, you just kill half our troops. That's cool. That's awesome. We like you. Stop doing that. We'll kill you later. <sighs> Mage Knight. Benediction of Matthew, I'm yawning. I'm yawning. Good old fashioned yawn. There we go. Let's get him up in the best. Good old white mage is Kiraga, because I obviously must make a Final Fantasy reference in this game because it's based off Final Fantasy tactics. Two unit. Till my words of where you're traveling. <laughs> well, no problem. Being senseless. Engaged in melee 
combat. Yeah, nades are all about just manipulating the battlefield and making sure that their shanks get into the right kidneys. Lost troopers. Honestly, if you want to be like the super optimal cavalry regiment, you'd have knight, knight knave, knight knave, and just spam out uh, cataphracts and things like marauders. Yeah, cataphracts, marauders would be your best bet because you can just you have the range of the marauders, you have the strength of the cataphracts, and you have the kind of the power of the um, lancers. So you're kind of this, and no idea, for every single one of those, every, you always gain a plus one movement speed, so if you just manage to spam out a bunch of those, suddenly you're slamming into the enemy for a crap ton of damage, and yeah, you're stuck in penalties pretty bad, but again, it doesn't, at that point, <laughs> you don't really care about getting stuck in, because you're just so strong in your first attack. Oh, Wildwood Roads. Why does it want to do that? If it's going to do that, I'm going to just make that a wildwood. Wild, wildwood. Firing line, all you. Void stalkers, silent stalkers. Dreads. Yeah, like the Moon Druid's pretty solid if you go down kind of the more battle caster route for like a Magus Ranger. Moon Druid's, Sun Druid's, even like both of these are pretty solid. You know, picks just because you can just buff your guys up to insane capacities or just blind everyone. Uh, yeah, no, if you were to be. You really wanted to go down another one for cavalry only. Cossacks and marauders wouldn't be the worst options you could you could have. Oh god, I'm sorry. Keep going to sleep, get sleepy. Damage twenty second highest value. Okay. Super super heavy shieldings. Oh, I never put a picture here. I thought I did. I do that after stream. Then we have all our melee weapons, our ranged weapons, our various wands. I should put actually in a conversion chart for, you know, captain weapons being like, this is what this weapon is, this is what this weapon is. That would actually be a good idea if I did that. Just because, again, the captain's going to have some weapons that aren't necessarily like, this is what it's roughly equivalent to. Uh, so we have our light heavy shields, cavalry. Shock Beast, Endurance Beast, Aggressive Beast, Mobility, and you picture there, and then we have our non-player characters. I actually put these all into alphabetical order, which took a lot fucking longer than it should. Fun fact. Because fun, fu fun fucking fact. When you get out these many goddamn units, you eventually everything starts melding together, and you start putting things where they shouldn't be, and the alphabet becomes simply a joke and a suggestion. Don't worry, that's fine. I'm not complaining. Uh, we have our opposing captains. I didn't. I could probably go into a little bit more depth with these ones, but I chose not to for the simple sake of ease more than anything. Like if you really want to make a certain captain, if a, if a you know game master says I want to make a very particular character, and it's going to be this way. And I can't stop you. I can't say, well, that's not according to your rules. I can't do that. I won't do that. That's not who I am. That's not what I do. But 
Uh, just as they, like, hey, they're kind of like an elite, cool, badass. They have about 11 attribute points to distribute. They have four class attribute, and they have about tier, tr you know, troop tiers of about three. Uh, extended rules, and then I add a bunch of races, including Elf, Dwarf, Shek, Hiver, Bonga, and Viera, because... <laughs> Viera. Uh, not my favorite, actually. No, I mean... Uh, on new troop creation, I added in a line for Dwarves and a line to the Shek because I thought that would be fun. Big troopers in the squad. So, and just kind of a idea on what big troopers look like. And now mind you, big troopers are still affected by the Warlord's uh, glory kill, where he can just run up and stab them in the fucking face and kill them. Which, uh, yeah. Don't fuck with the warlord because he puts, because he can just put you know someone your your big golem archers twenty three HP just run up there and stab him to death, and win because he's a goddamn Superman. But the problem is obviously he's using his full turn for that, and he can't do it again. So it's just like haha, you took out my bait card. I actually have a full tier dragon on my team, and he's now going to kill your squad. Lamau, 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 lamau. So, with that, I think we're done. So, our final product came out to 94 pages in total. I uh, still didn't get a name. I think this project tactic is what it's going to be at this point. Uh, 14,881 words. And overall, I feel pretty proud of this this one. I think this, this game turned out a lot more solid than I was thinking it was going to be. And I think some things... Once I kind of dedicated myself to say, okay, this is how I'm going to do it. I'm going to make tactics over a merch of the Black Queen. This is how, this is why. I think once I dedicated myself to that, I think everything kind of snapped together a lot easier. Could I add more? Yeah. Of course. There's, there's always the, well, I can add this. Oh, well, I can add this. Oh, I should add this. But there always comes this other point where it's just like, you know what? No, I don't need to add this. This is the see this is just going to add things that don't need to be there. Generally, I think we've I, we've done pretty well on this. It's here I'm actually Curiosity Kill the Cat. How many streams have we done on this? And I've done everything here on stream actually. Outside adding things like pictures and uh, stuff like that. So let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So about ten streams, all ranging from, eh, we'll call it at an average about an hour and a half, hour and 45 minutes each. So we're looking at about eh, 13, 14 hours maybe on this game. But overall, I think we did pretty well. Overall, no worry, I'm just gonna crack my voice because I'm actually a teenager. <laughs> no, that's called my throat being all crabby because it is allergy season for me, unfortunately. And anytime it's allergy season, I get put on my ass. In case you're wondering, no, it's not the Corona Chan. She has not uh, visited, luckily. So, what are we gonna do now? Actually, I'm gonna, what I can do is I can put. Uh, I can change the color to our completed green. Project Tactics is done. We've wrapped it up. So we're going to go to things Notepad and on wants to do. And take a look at our various games. So, Project Tactics. Da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da! Da, 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 da. We did it! Yay! We did it! But what do we do now? Well, we have a few options of how we want to go forward, really. Well, we have things obviously like Project Eris, which the the hentai dojin RPG doesn't need to exist. Project Tank. I've had ideas of how to do this. <laughs> And each idea continuously gets worse and worse <laughs> until it's just like me 
making just shouting noises at my screen, being like, but what if you're the uh, tank crew operator and you're uh, doing the things? Yeah, that's it. Vroom, vroom. Like, when that's, when your uh, thought processes have devolved into making vroom, vroom noises, you know it's a lost cause. Uh, Eros, that's another one of those, like, I know how to do it. I know what I would want to do to it. If any of you have ever heard of Black Tokyo, it would effectively be that without any of the stupid shit involved in it, but that kind of takes away from the, <laughs> the the key part of it, almost. But the the entire purpose of that game would have to be either, like, a very... Combat, because combat wouldn't be combat. It wouldn't be just like, I take out my sword and hit you for 1d10 damage. It would effectively almost have to be, um... Like, clothing damage to your stuff. Let's like, yeah, I know, I'm hit you and I destroy you. You know, I take five points off your, you know, shirt health. You know, you're, all, you know, you're almost bare net. You know, you almost don't have a shirt, all right? Oh, no, you did 15 damage to my skirt. <laughs> oh, God, you know, I've lost, you know, my power there. That's kind of the idea behind that. And I have the option of making it, like, an actual quote-unquote game or just making it kind of like a parody game. I don't quite know how I want to do that yet. And that's kind of it. Up, up in the air, oh, far away from where I'm thinking. Uh, let's see what other weird ones are popping up in my head. Um, there is actually a game someone made on the Taiwanese basket weaving form a while back, which is called the Tentacle Labyrinth, which is exactly as it sounds. I was debating on hunting that down and retooling, reworking, re remajiggering it for Project Eros and just making it like a full-on legit game and not a weird half-troll, half-coomer post and being just like, here you go, everyone. The thing you never wanted. But outside of that, we have our two fixed projects that we're still kind of uh, iffy on. Rifts is still going to be my white whale holy grail and will be until the end of time, I feel. It's... There's a lot of things with rifts to consider. And unfortunately for me, I want everything in rifts, but I can't have everything. So I have to kind of sit back and say, okay, what part of rifts, what part of this goddamn monolith of a game do I want to check, you know, chink off and mold into my own? What, you know, what parts? Uh, what do I take? What do I leave out? Do I you know, keep in this weird inequality between the race, the classes? Oh, you know, do I keep in RCCs? Do I keep in OCCs? Do I make it a combination of RCC and OCC? And it's like, I don't know. And that, that's kind of the hardest part with this. It's just like, I don't know. Because each of them have a good... Uh, every part of Rifts could be its own gang. That's the weird part. Hell, uh, post-apocalyptic, uh, you know, magic, uh, gunslinging Wild West setting. It's a, that's its own game. That is just a small part, a small little section of Rift's Earth. That what makes it so complicated to work with. Because if you do that part, well, you need to put Spirit West in, where Native Americans got uh, isekai'd into another realm, only to come back and realize shit's fucked. So you had to put that in, and but if you put that in, then you have to put in the headhunters in, then you have to put the juicers in, then you have to put the crazies in, and if you put the crazies in, that means you got to put Germany in, and it's like, oh no, there's so much stuff, and you add in the various juicer types, it's like, no good answer, no good answer. So uh, that's that very educated uh, answer there, uh, Kid World. <laughs> Kid World. Kid, Kid World is such a cringy game that I love it to pieces, and my idea for it is kind of based around the key idea of taking the idea of the younger you are, the more you can see, the more your senses are there, and kind of running with that idea, and trying not to bump the edge edgeometer up a little bit too high. Look, my basic idea is the older you get, the less your senses are, but the more skills you get, pretty much more life experience you have. Where your little, like a little kid will be able to see something and say, like, hey, you know, what's this? What's a car? If you're a five-year-old and you're looking at it, like, what's this car? 
and you know, or pretty much picture how an engineer having to explain to a child, okay, this is how you fix this, because I can't see it, I have no eyes, I'm, bl- I'm completely blind, and that would be kind of the one of the biggest struggles. And what I would almost want to do is make a uh, dynamic that every ca- every player has two characters. Uh, you know, either a you know two kids, teen a, a teenager and a kid, or an adult and a kid, with the idea of that kind of dynamic playing. And you know, two kids together, you know, they can see the world, they can really interact with each other, and they're able to do a lot of things. You know, a teenager and a kid. The teenager has very limited sight. They can still see, but they need like coke bottle glasses to be effective. But they also have all this experience, and they're a bit tougher than the average kid. While the adult and kid, the adult's completely blind, and he, they're helpless on their own. So they need their eyes to do things for them. But you also have to deal with the fact that it's a child. And children are stupid. <laughs> and so you're dealing with this idea of, okay, my eyes are here, and they're telling me things that I can't see. How do I deal with this? You know, as as an adult, how do I deal with the fact that I cannot see, but I need to protect this child? And there's there's bits and pieces of Kid World that I like, and bits and pieces I don't like. Some of the they they added this weird edge factor, which I think this really clashes with some of the with some of the ideas, other ideas in the game. Because you know what, fuck it, I can I can do this. I have the book. Why don't I just show you the book? It's literally, this, this isn't like a complicated affair, no patents. yip uh, yip uh, Oh god. Hello. Yeah, Kid World's dumb. Like, it's, it's a dumb product, but I also kind of like it in its own weird... Uh, we want to look at Kidville. So you kind of see this is a really shitty scan of it, but I couldn't actually find this game like anywhere. It's you get some weird things like this, and if we scroll down a little bit. It's like, oh, don't be a kid and play this. Like, no shit. Uh, where are you? And, again, it's really chunky for some reason. Like, I don't know what the hell happened here. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, let's see. Where is it? Where is it? Oh, yeah. You get, like, this entire section on, like, this is what kids do. It's like, what are you smoking? Or, like, Oh, hey, we have this entire thing on drugs, diseases, and poison. Like, three pages of it. It's like... What? What the... Yeah, it's just like, oh, well, kids are going to be all psychopaths and really weird about things. It's like... No, I don't think that kids are going to act like psychopaths. It's just like, oh, hey, here's the grown-up classes. And, like, again, they have a weird class system, too, which I hate. Uh, so, let's see. Yeah, and so, like, they have entire sections on, like, oh, here's, uh, in, you know, here's enslavement. What? Why do you have an entire section on slavery for children? That's fucking weird. <laughs> it's like, but why? <laughs> That's my question. But why? <laughs> it's like, you have like this, like they, they go really deep into it. And... Again, they have all of these. It's like, oh, hey, look, you have, like, the older you get, the more penalties you get. It's like a negative 26. Like, the 
The numbers here get a little bit wonky. It's like, oh, that's that's great. Or they address like weirdly adult things. I'm like, you don't need to do that. You don't. You don't need. We we don't. We don't need to know that at all. So please don't tell us, please. So that's kind of my my goal with Kid World would almost be having to take surgical tools to it and take out all the creepy shit <laughs> cuz it gets real fucking creepy at points so it's like okay let's surgically remove that and just have the core concept of um boost the music up to smidge uh the core concept of there are kids in this world that you know all the adults have either gone crazy gone blind or are dead and kids are the only ones who can really see and interact with the world anymore. They've kind of reverted back to this kind of tribalistic society with their own very uh, different interpretation of things. All right, cool. We can work with that. It's Lord of the fucking Flies. And that has its own unique branch of interesting things to go with it. What does a group of, you know, what do a small group of children do when they, you know, they, it's hard for children to understand things. You know, that would be kind of the hardest part because I've you know, talked about this before. Uh, adults can only play two kinds of children role playing games. They can play five year olds or they can play 18 year olds. There's no real difference. It's very hard for people to get into that middle. They either act like, hee hee hee, look at me, I'm a little, I'm, I'm a little Timmy and I'm a fucking idiot. Or they act just like an adult, but they say I'm young. It, it, it's hard to really get into the, the headspace of. A teenager, and you know I've been a teenager before. I've, I, you, you can remember it. You can sit back and say, "Yeah, I acted like an asshole then," or "Hey, yeah, this is what teenagers act like." But every teenager goes through a different experience. Every single kid goes through something a little bit different. I would have to try to replicate that of the natural cycle of growing up. And the I think the the three toughest things with Kid World would be portraying that kind of the you are kids and how do you role play kids and give incentives for role playing a kid versus you know role playing you know role playing a 18 year old in a 5 in a 12 year old's body that sounded really terrible twitch do not cancel me i'm talking about a game uh, even though they do address that for some fucking reason in the book we don't okay, no no not talking about it book's bad but that's kind of my ideas in the back of my head of like how to do it. It would be a lot of little little work on that one. And overall, I would probably, ironically enough, I would probably make it a, a sliding dice pool system. Like kids get a lot of, get, get a lot of dice to like perception, looking at things, but they get they get absolutely goddamn nothing when it comes to like, Anything more complicated than, like, first, second grade, you know, stuff. And honestly, that's probably how I would rank the skills is 1 through 12, depending on how much dice you roll. Kids can only go up to a certain amount, while an adult can go up to the floor, and that depends on your grade, how old you are, effectively. You know, having a third grade education in something means like, yeah, you understand some things, uh, but you don't understand other people. Or having a third grade idea of empathy. Be nice to people is about the extent of what you get. But having a 12th grade you know, level of empathetic thought is a lot more complex because it's you are able to rationalize with people. You understand nuances and how people are addressing you. You're able to kind of tell that guy's acting kind of shady. Why is that not take things at face value? You're a lot better at being eloquent. You can speak to people. You can lie a bit better. Because when you were like five, you when you lied to someone, you were just like, I didn't break the vase. No, I didn't. I didn't do it at all. You, know, you were very unconvincing because you're five. And you, you kind of relied on looking cute and you're know, hoping to God they didn't blame you for it. When you're older and you're just like, yeah, I didn't break the base. It was already broken when I got in here. I mean, like, I was here. You know, you, ha you have the ability to make, you know, um, causality. 
and to kind of address that. So that would be kind of my, how I would want to do skills. I would have to break down. There probably wouldn't be too many skills, to be honest. And I would probably, probably base it off of just like basic curriculum things. Um, have things like uh, if you're a high school student, for example, you, uh, some characters, like adults, high school students, that would have, access to thing, you know, more advanced skills that they only get a few little dice in, but it's things like a kid's not going to understand this at all. Like, can a kid put together a birdhouse? Yeah, that seems pretty likely. Can a child clean a gun? Maybe. <laughs> you know, can a seven-year-old child who's never interacted with rifles in his entire life assemble an AK-47? Probably fucking not, <laughs> because he's a child. And they're dumb. <laughs> so that would be kind of... Unless you're Russian, I guess. But that would be kind of my um, approach to things. At least. So let's see. Oh, what other game is that? Oh, okay. This one, this one, this one, this one. Oh, this is Abandon All Hope. This is another game I would love to do some fix on. Because effectively, what you could sum up Abandon All Hope as is a... Science fiction doom game, but you're not Doom Slayer. You're a dude, <laughs> and you know it's a prison ship going to space, Australia, and Cthulhu s chaos monsters come out of the woodwork and try to eat you, and you're trying to you're, you're trying to survive. I would love to make this work because the game doesn't. The math behind it is broke, like fundamentally speaking. There's a lot of but there's a lot of cool things like, oh hey. Here's your you know, prisoner designation. Here's your number. And what I, would, what I would like to do there almost is do almost a completely random character generation of you having to roll your prisoner ID number to assign why you're in there, where you're from, and some of, like all your really basic attribute information, and then having you, the player, kind of assign things a little bit more deeper. But it's just like, hey, I'm a white class criminal from the burbs of Earth, and I was, you know, caught on tax evasion. That's going to be completely different than I'm a ruthless criminal mastermind. You know, I'm a ruthless criminal, you know, triple, quadruple homicide, ultra murder man, serial killer, and I'm from a space station. You combine all these together, and then you like, how do these two meet? How do they get along? As they both are trying to survive against all odds. One thing about Abandon All Hope, I think it, it's one of those few games as well that have an end goal. I feel not a lot of games actually have these anymore. Not a lot of uh, tabletop games, at least. Because it's like, well, you design the end goal. Abandon All Hope is one of, I would say, about maybe a dozen games on the top of my head that really have that solid, like, this is the goal of the game. It's to get off the ship and get to safety. Or die trying. Or try to hold back the, you know, it and, you know, get the ship out of safety. But the key goal is get the fuck off the ship that's trying to eat us. And I, I'd love to go a little bit deeper into this because it's... Because you get things like the gangs, you get the, uh, you know, like what contraband, you know, contraband is, and you'd also, how I would probably do it is the players have to choose between being guards and criminals, you know, cops and robbers, and, you know, the cops get their own designation, but they also have access to all the best equipment right off the bat. The problem is it's in very short supply and everyone hates you. Criminals, on the other hand, you know, have to kind of scavenge for things a lot more and they have to fix things and their goal is to get to again get they get off the ship. But their problem is that they are, well, random people who start out with a jumpsuit. You don't you know, and in a prison, you know, the doors swing open and okay, Cthulhu's you know, a monster size and small truck is coming after you with things larger than your arm. Uh, what do you do? Step one, bitch. 
So that that would be kind of how I wanted would do uh, abandon all hope. So let's keep going through. Uh, I have a few of these games that I kind of have the idea of what I would like to do. What other? What, actually, here. Let me, I can actually put this on here. Uh, ban it all. What other weird games do I have? It's I collect games. Just over. Usually, I try to find ones that are kind of out of print or really hard to find. Uh, to just kind of complete my various uh, desires, you could say. Oh yeah, here's. See, Kuro is just a pain in the ass to get because it's. Cyberpunk Japanese horror. It's like, okay, that's kind of weird. Uh, what other ones do we have? You haven't noticed, I love post apocalyptic stuff. I love it. Why? I don't know, but I do. What modernish games do I have? Oh, oh boy. Oh god, we could do this one. We could try to do Sigmata. Sigmata is a game. <laughs> Sigmata actually drew a lot of attention on my Korean basket weaving forms because it was so uh, political that it kind of hurt. And the core idea, I think the idea behind it's solid. Hey, America got taken over by fascists in a completely retarded sense, but don't question it. Uh, you now get empowered by the power of 70s technology to become superhumans, and now you must fight fight against the evil government. Pulp as fuck, I love it. It also has a really interesting kind of uh, faction system as you're kind of balancing the needs of it's the old men, the church, uh, the the literal the the literal communists and ultra cap and and cap capitalists. Oh, hello phone. Like, those are who you're kind of balancing your faction, your the resistance movement with. And I actually kind of like that idea because it's you as a player are encouraged to not really commit to any of the factions because you have to keep every faction happy. And if you piss off one faction enough, they're going to join the other side. But if you make that faction win too fast, suddenly, like, they're the one... You have to kind of oppose them. And, you know, what happens when you take out your your, your allies? And it's kind of a revolution and counter-revolution. It has a lot of ideas like that. The problem is, it's marred in politics. <laughs> like, it's marred in the shit. It, it, it's, it, you know, they say drain the swamp. That shit has already covered it. its fucking head in the swamp. It's no longer there anymore. It's so filled with politic bullshit. And it's like one of the main example characters was part of fucking, uh, the, uh, not Colombian, um, I can see it right now. I'm, I'm drawing a complete fucking... Uh, the, oh, yeah, the Khmer Rouge. Yeah, I know. He, he, he was one of Pol Pot's lieutenants. He's, like, one of the main characters in Superpowered and Cool because he's minority. It's like... What? <laughs> no. No, you can't bring out one of Pol Pot's lieutenants and think no one's going to notice. It's like... Oh... Kidoki then, and... It's like, this is the freedom fist. Look, I'll build America great again. Yuck, yuck, yuck. And it's like, oh my god, stop it. Stop ruining decent games with your shitty politics. I don't give a shit. I just want to play good games. Uh, what other ones do we have that are kind of interesting that I don't think get a lot of love? Well, there's the various Night Shift. Night Shift was actually a kind of a unique one. Uh, this is actually a TG original, which the, there's about, about, I, I think there's like six or seven of these, in kind of, uh, environment, and the uh, entire idea of Night Shift is that you, as the players, are on Night Shift at a, at a gas station or, you know, some kind of a quickie mart. and weird stuff starts going on, and you have to kind of fix it and make it till morning. 
and it's kind of all played with this idea of you know subtle modernity that's you know completely natural and nothing's out of the ordinary. You know, and this is completely normal, but you know don't go out, don't go into the freezer section at you know this hour because you know Bloody Mary shows up and tries to eat your fucking face off. You know, or like oh hey look it's yeah don't look outside. You know the the, the ghosts of Christmas past show up every now and again and want to you know devour the souls of the living. You know don't worry about it though. You know, you know, Chuck. Chuck the ghost shows up every now and again. We'll ask where he smokes. Don't give him smokes. It's like I, I kind of have the idea of how he would want to do it. You know, kind of emphasizing the night to night to night basis, and how every player is kind of dealing with their own things. It would have to be. I would probably aim for more beer and pretzels. Like, yes, this is like random night shift that you go on, and here's the wacky adventure that you all go on and try not to get horribly murdered and yell at day shift for not cleaning the fucking cash register out or something. You get what? Uh, let's see. Um, if we wanted another strange game, this is, this is a very strange one. It gets a lot of praise because it's a deals with a very interesting... A psychological phenomenon, but it's called exquisite replicas. So, the key idea is that uh, people are effectively taking over your everyone and replacing them with aliens, and only you and a select other hand, you know, select full of handful of other people have begun to understand this and are trying to fight back against them. You know, they are exquisite replicas. Now, one of the interesting things is this is actually based off a... a uh, very real disease. I can't remember the, the disease at the top of my head, but the disease effectively can be summarized as you don't perceive people as themselves, you perceive, like, you think that they're replicas, there's, like, someone has replaced them, it's actually a horrible disease, and it's pretty much the, the best way to kind of understand it, how it was kind of explained to me, it was, picture waking up one morning next to your, you know, your wife or your husband or whatever, and you suddenly think that they are not them, they, they call themselves that, and if you address them as such as that, but your head is saying it's not them. Something, they're not them. But everything is perfectly fine and everyone accepts it. You, people will go insane from that. You know, it's like, almost like um, impromptu gaslighting, almost. And the idea behind it is pretty good. It's kind of marred on some bad math, but that happens a lot with these kind of games. Mostly games that came out late 2000s. Uh, early 2010s, like, there was a lot of these games that came out that, like, even late 90s, early 2000s, kind of the 2000s in general, like, who just came out, and they, the math was kind of wonky, because we were right in the middle of the D20 era, and we were right in the middle of, kind of, White Wolf's kind of fall from grace at that point, so everyone was kind of experimenting, and no one really knew what they wanted, uh, let's see, what do we have in the, the, the fantasy folder? I just have, I have a flash drive of just hundreds of games that over, I've just collected over the years. Uh, I already did my Amber game. <laughs> Fate, which I'm still pitching to people. I will always pitch it and be like, here you go, you want to play Fate? Look, everyone, it's Fate. Fate. Oh, let's see. Oh, yeah, we have this very bizarre... A uh, game that came out in like 2018 or something. It was, uh, two Worlds. You remember Two Worlds? Yeah, no one else fucking does either. It was a mediocre like Xbox 360 game. Uh, they made it into a tabletop RPG. And not a good one either. Like, it's... It's bad. Like, it's just bad. It's... It's not even like... <laughs> Yeah, it's not even like a good, a good one. It's just, yeah, no, new. No. Like, oh, 
okay, this is awful and I hate it. So, I, I mean, I probably won't even touch it because, well, why the hell? Because it's fucking two world. Look at that. It's two worlds. Who asked for this? Nobody asked for this. Nobody wanted this. But here we are, and here's what it is, and this is what we... Yeah, you, here are the races, I guess. You want to play Serpent Man? Cool, you can do that. Want to play an orc? Yeah, cool. Oh, can't forget the humans and the Groms. Oh, can't forget the Groms. Oh, here's, here's, your, here's your dwarf. Why does you have a flat face? That's terrifying. I hate it. But yeah, that's Two Worlds, the RPG. Not exactly the uh, Tour de Force of gaming that we would ever want. Oh god, what else do we have? Oh god, here's the Final Fantasy RPG. Uh, this is the revised. <laughs> and, um, yeah, this is a thick boy. This is a thick book. Of just things and tables and nightmares. Like, they, they do kind of like my big sin when it comes to tabletop games, and they try to like replicate a video game one for one. I think notably some of the older Final Fantasies, they try to like, we're going to do this exactly as those games did, and being like, that's a terrible idea. You should definitely not do that. If anyone considers ever making their own game, do not replicate video game mechanics. You can take the idea behind the video game mechanics. Do not replicate them, though. Because you get some things like any Pokemon game that tries to exist as it makes a Pokemon. Like, Pokemon's actually, you know, a relatively complex game that is simplified by the use of computers and streaming and code. The game itself knows, okay, I'm hitting them for 100 damage. They have X armor or X toughness, so we reduce it by this. And they're weak against it, so it times it by two. That's the amount of damage it does. Boom. Done. Now, picture doing that over and over and over again on the table. You have six of these little fucking monsters to deal with. And you have a hundred stats for each of them, and you gotta worry about everything. Oh, no, because we gotta replicate the games one for one. No, don't do that. I will hit you with a whistle ball bat. Cease. In the name of God. Uh, what other weird games do we have out there? Uh, yeah, this is now just let's go through Notepad Anon's game collection and see what he what he can fish up to. What we, we he would like to fix one day. God, can I actually even show this? Okay, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna, I'm gonna put it right here. I'm gonna o open up this just to make sure. Okay. So it's fine. So I'm going to open up a game. Can I actually show this? Uh, I believe I can. I believe I can. Okay, I just got to... I just got to, like, position it. I'm just going to position the notepad right there. So I'm going to... Okay, there we are. Oh, good. Nope. Uh, let me just. Nope. Don't. Nope. Don't need to do that. Need to position you right, right there. Now, if you know what this game is, I apologize because Fatal is bad. <laughs> Fatal's real bad, like Terra bad. This book is. Uh, let me. Let me. Let me check. Ah, nine hundred eighty-one pages of. What the fuck? It's bad. Like, it's real bad. And it's dumb. And it's... Has weird things in it, like rabies and smallpox. It's like it's really bulky, but also not really bulky at all. Because it, it, it's, it's dumb. It's a dad game. And... I'd love to just poke at it and just remake it in my image make the make notepads fatal because i am a 
I'm a fucking masochist, I've learned these days. Just, I hate myself, and I wish to watch myself in pain. Oh, uh, God, what other, what other games are there that I may be interested in fixing up? Ew. Let's see, it's actually in... Oh, yeah, here's my, uh... Here's my favorite game of all time, otherwise known as God, I Wish I Was Filipino, the game. Uh, I hate this game. It's dumb. Like, uh, this isn't actually a game. Like, it's it's not. And if anyone's just like, well, yes, no bad add on, it's technically a game. It's not. And whoever tells you that is lying to you and hates you. And thinks you're a blithering moron who can't white, you know, eat their own food properly. So, um, overall, I don't quite know what I want to work on next. I have a few ideas of what sounds fun, of what seems interesting, but I don't have, a, like, a solid idea of what I would do, like, Oh, let's work on Exalted again. No, I don't want to work on Exalted again. I I can work on um Table Talk Online if I really want to. If I if I'm really kind of scratching the barrel and just don't know what to do, that's probably what I'll do. But overall, um I don't know. So suggestions are always welcome. Yes, I am a um lying by the seat of my pants right now unless I make a completely different game from the top of my head or something really comes up that sounds like hey this game needs to exist and it doesn't but uh, well thank you all very much for watching I'm going to call it a night here you can stream for about an hour and hour and a half maybe and I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day okay goodbye